sense for me to go back to the year zero for this and figure out what the population was back then. Yeah, for all we know, this city doesn't even exist, right? Instead of taking, you know, 1998 being 1998 and heading our way back to zero and finding out what that population was, things like this population growth are good only for a relatively short period of time. 2,000 years ago is a long time. We have no idea what was going on 2,000 years ago in this place that this city is. So that's why we try to keep it in short time frames. All right, projected population in 2004. What do I do to find that? Plug in what for T? How do you get six? Yeah, I take my 2004 and subtract my 1998. That'll tell me that T is going to be six years since 2004, so I'll plug that in. A equals 292. Uh, I don't have no zeros, do I? No. I lost one. <coughs> By the way, so did a lot of you in your homework. Your 22,000 amount that you started with on your money, for many people became 2,200, it turned out. 0 0.02 times 6. So I'll plug that into my calculator. And this gives me 329,229.0807. Is that an acceptable answer? No. No, because you can't have parts of people, well, you can, but they're not going to be very happy people. Now, that's probably very little of a person. So what do I do with that? All right. I can just erase it. Or if you're one of these people who said, well, that was close enough to being a person, you can make them up to the next level. So you could round up to, it's also acceptable, would be 329,230 people. Either one would be acceptable. Now, in what year will the population reach 365,004? I'm going to let you figure this one out because it's very much like what we did over here only easier because we have a nice exponential function that's natural. So when we change to logarithmic form, it'll be just the natural log. We won't have any change of base stuff going on. So that's 365,004. Then you uh, switch it into natural log. Okay, so it'll be the natural log of? The left side. So 3, 000, 6, uh, no, 365,004 over 292,000, all right? And then that's equal to what? 0 0.02t. Now, I obviously can just divide by 0 0.02. So 365,004 over 292,000 divided by 0 0.02 is t. And this is not what I was asked for, was it? I was asked. In what year will this happen? So I actually have to calculate this. It comes out to be 11.158 or something. Is that the answer? No. No, because again, it's just that number again, but that's how many years since 1998. So what year will this happen in? 2009. 2009. Now, I don't have to worry about this being into the next year. When is 11 years after 1998? Well, that's the beginning of 2009, yes? So this 0.158 would be somewhere like maybe in late January. What if this were 0.927? Would I change it to 2010? No, 0.927 may be somewhere in December, but it's still in the year 2009. So on these, what during what year will something happen? You don't even want to round up. You want to just lock it off because this is somewhere in that year, but this will tell you what year to start on when January starts. All right. I think I'm going to want to skip this one. No, this one will work really well. This one is a lot different than the one we just did. The one we did, we used this formula, we're going to use it again, but this time we're not given, are we? Nope, we're not given an initial population, we're not given a group.
growth rate. And we're still going to be asked to find a function that models this. Any suggestions for how to do that? You're not going to be subtracting. The reason you're not subtracting is that this is exponential growth. It's not linear growth. Linear growth, you can do subtraction. Exponential, you can't. So what do you think I ought to do? If it's that 15 minutes, T equals zero. Uh, let's see, let 15 minutes be T equals zero. OK. Then we have. Um, 16,054 equals 600 e to the r times 20. So your growth rate doesn't care where you start. You need to pick a place to be zero, and then you can work from that place to figure out the growth rate. So in this case, 35 minutes after, 35 minutes in total, or 20 minutes after 15, I have gone from having 600 to 16,054. So I can then use this to calculate the growth rate and then work my way back to find out how many things I really did start with. In this case, I'm going to pretend I started with 600 if I let 15 minutes be t equals 0. So I can solve this. Just did one. What do I do to solve it? Divide by 600. So I have 16,054 divided by 600 equals e to the r times 20. And then? <coughs> Change forms. Change forms. What will my new form look like? Natural log. Natural log of? Log sign. 16,054 over 600, and then that's going to equal r times, 20. r times 20. And then finally, divide by 20. Divide by 20. Natural log of 16,054 over 600 divided by 20 equals r. Now I got news for you. This is definitely a number you do not want to round. This answer would be a perfect answer for web work when it asks, what's the growth rate? Just put it in like that. My recommendation is if you want to actually round it, to put it into web work, is on your calculator, save it somewhere after you've done the calculation. Because you're going to need it again. And by the way, I'm perfectly happy if in the next part of the problem where we're doing the calculation of how many, by the way, because we just did this first part, find the growth rate. If in the future parts of the problem where you need to use this, you just leave it as an R, knowing that this is the answer that you have there, I'm okay if you write that down, because I know that gets messy to put it in X font. So I found my relative growth rate. Now I want to find out how many, what do I have? Bacteria I started with. Suggestions for finding out how many bacteria I started with. What do you want to do, James? Um, that A will be 600. Okay. Do I have to use the 600 one? No. No. I could use either one of the 615 or I could use the 16,054.